Oh, you're not holding back at all now, are you, Brandon? Hey, Internet, I'm Steve the Cosmere Knot, and this is Raffo. Rhythm of War, Cosmere Connections, today diving into part two. If you missed part one, you can see it right here. Spoilers for everything, let's go! There's a lot on this map from Nas. What's the weird thing? What thing of Chris's does he have? Strange storm toward the nexus of imagination, which goes to Bray's? And the expanse of vibrance probably leads to Nalthus. Prob maybe. The epigraphs in part two are a letter to Hoyd, called Wanderer, from Sazed, who must be relatively new to his position as he still hasn't met Hoyd in person. If the dates of the story are similar to the dates of these letters, Sazed has been a shard for about 300 years. He drops a bunch of different shard names. Some we know, many we don't. 11 out of 16. Endowment, Invention, Whimsy, Mercy, Valor, Devotion, Dominion, Ambition, Odium, Preservation, and Ruin. There's a wound on the spiritual realm near Threnody? Does that have anything to do with the cognitive anomaly in the Nalthus system? Probably not, but that's another weird thing. He conspicuously doesn't mention autonomy, as that's the shard encroaching on his planet. To combat his oppositional stasis, he's crafting a sword. Wax. A wax sword wouldn't be very effective. He specifically says Hoyd rejected the chance to hold a shard. The power of Odium's shard is more dangerous than the mind behind it, particularly since any investiture seems to gain a will of its own when not controlled. In truth, it would be a combination of a vessel's craftiness and the power's intent that we should fear most. So, uh... I'm terrified. Shallan is the master light weaver in the Unseen Court, made up of agents and unbonded squires. The stump from Edge Dancer is going to Shadesmar. Enter Stargile, a tall fellow who is talented at seeing into Shadesmar. He is tall. It, it's true. She gets her cell phone from Ray's. Zahel gave Adolin a Halandran coin, probably with Peace Giver the Blessed on it. When is that coin going to be made into a challenge coin, Brandon? Stargyle's wife got sick! I hope Kat's okay. Adolin's job is sword. I need someone else whose job is sword to show me our universe analogs of each of the weapons Adolin is bringing. Zu, the Stone Ward, is Iriali. Upon manifesting radiant powers, she was exiled, thought cursed by a strange god whose name Adolin didn't recognize, likely off-world. She says Adolin should become a radiant. We all agree, Zu. Felts on the Shadesmar expedition, with his wife. No Dustbringers, as they're not loyal enough to Dalinar. What happened to Rol Na? Probably running his walking island kingdom or something. The conversation between Adolin and Dalinar is significant, I think. Lots of foreshadowing to things we don't know yet. And we start getting Shallan's drawings of the different types of intelligence spren. Very courteous of her to write in English, unlike Navani. The Urethiru Oathgate spren say their parent, the sibling, is dead. If so, their bonding with Navani bodes well for Adolin and Maya. We saw Mist Spren and Peak Spren in Celebrant in Oathbringer. Urethiru is glowing in a very not-actually-dead sort of way. Adolin thought his Shardplate might make the transition to Shadesmar because of his relationship with Maya? Gallant has a glowing after-image here. Mention of Isaseek the mapmaker, Isaac Stewart, who thought the place was incredible for reasons Adolin hadn't been able to grasp. I need fan art of Pattern interrupting Adolin and Shallan's hug. It's adorable. Adolin notices Pattern has feet. Godeki says the Almighty still lives in the hearts of men, and echoes a philosophy similar to the One from Eam and Arklo. Lift has a knack for finding manifesting radiance. Maya helps brush Gallant, which is new. Gallant, Gallant, I, uh, it's pronunciation. Chapter 23, we meet Aiden, who aspires to be a Windrunner. I assume he's going to get there by the second arc. Sil knows how to read! Also, Yasna can soul cast medicines, which is real impressive. More advanced radiants use less stormlight activating the Oath Gates. The plague from the Pure Lake has arrived in Urethiru, the one that got started by Grump and Blunt and Thinker. The Ghost Bloods want Ba Ado Mishram. She provided the singers with forms of power during the False Desolation, so could she manipulate connection to attach someone to a different planet? Lirin has a near superhuman ability to recall people and faces. 
Kaladin starts to invent mental health treatment. Shallan figures out why she was originally seeing cryptics in the Way of Kings. She'd been peeking into Shadesmar. Her unconscious mind had begun to perceive Spren as they appeared in the Cognitive Realm. Reachers, Will Shaper Spren, aren't around. Gathering with the listeners? Light weaving won't stick to Nightblood's sheath because it's made of aluminum. Mention of Badali, a stone ward. I wonder if he makes jewelry on the side. Shallan uses her cell phone to talk to Mraze for the first time. I know him, it says. Adolin meets a Deadeye cryptic, more recent than the Radiance. Such a huge hint that we miss completely! She was found ten years ago, and was found last year sitting on an island far to the east. She kept walking toward Eurythiru, so her business partner set up shop here. What actual locations? and times. Is there a lake in Yakaved near the Devar estate? Shallan remembers using a cell phone as a child? They meet other humans from Tukar. Are they kidnapping Spren for Ishar? They also meet Notum again, the Honor Spren captain. He says the Recreants caused eight genocides, all orders but the Skybreakers and Bondsmiths. Raboniel tells us about Make Im, with the surge of axial connection getting very atomic theory up in here. Kaladin invents group therapy. Chapter 34, we see manifested fire like Kelsier had in Secret History. Notum comes up riding an elegant horse-like spren, presumably born of Rishadium imagination. Adolin and Shallan see one of these, a star spren. It poses for them. There's another reference to the Measuring Spren interlude in Way of Kings. Adolin is right. Swords are nifty. Also, I don't think I've ever seen nifty used anywhere else in literature, but it was definitely part of my vernacular growing up. I did a vandalism. Felt might not be quite as spry as he'd once been, but he seemed to have a sixth sense for traveling in unknown places. Felt still wearing Bashan's floppy hat, the huntmaster from the Chasm Fiend hunt in Way of Kings. And for the first time, we get a genuinely gory sword fight. Adolin chops off a dude's head with his first swing. That type of thing doesn't happen with a shard blade. Maya guards Adolin's back doing the kata, and Gallant does a deception by loudly stomping and screaming to make it seem like others were coming. That horse is freaking smart. Venley says the High Storm granted the listener's birth. High storms predate the shattering, so how ancient are the listeners? The deepest ones say the ancient protections on Eurythiru have not been maintained, and that the Ralkalest has fallen from the walls of the tunnel. Ralkalest, which word we first see in Emperor's Soul, is aluminum. Raboniel has access to division. She swears by Edo. Edonalsium? Commander Lion is head of the Tower Guard, but he fell unconscious when the suppression fabrile was activated, because a spren chose him last month. A cryptic? It would make sense if Howard was a lightweaver. Another notebook page from Navani. I pictured the gemstone pillar and the actual gemstone fabrile as much larger. I was imagining the garnets as at least quarter sized, like an inch and a half. These ones are Bitty. Stormlight powered force field from a sapphire. Color is tied to a gemstone's identity and spirit web, because the actual composition of the gemstone is very similar. The sibling mentions Melishi, who created the protection device. She was the last bondsmith before the Recreants. Cal disappoints his father, who basically quotes the second ideal of the bondsmiths. I will take responsibility for what I have done. That has to be intentional. Interludes again! Moash, Vire, is trying to throw his shard blade like Adolin, claiming he must have changed the balance of his blade to make it possible. Ken, a member of Kaladin's Chicken Scout troop, wants to leave. Odium discourses on connection and interpersonal bonds. Gift, Rock's eldest son, is leaving food out for Lyft to steal. She can feel the Everstorm pass. She's got a knife from Dalinar. Knowing Brandon's love of minor connections, it might be the one from his walk through the storm years ago. As well as Hoyd's flute that Cal lost. The Night Watcher was created to specifically be unconnected. Perception doesn't influence her like other spread. I asked not to change, Lyft whispered, opening her eyes. I said, when everything else is going wrong, I want to be the same. I want to stay me, not become someone else. The last time things felt right, Lyft thought, I was with her. Before she got sick, I was her little girl. She sees Mraze's chicken going after a red one, from Gera, the old Kolinar steward, a known Feru chemist. They find his body, his eyes are different, and his metal mines are stolen. Mraze is on her tail. Odium wanted Dalinar for a war on the rest of the Cosmere, one who should have been their king. 
Taravangian again sees that Renarin is a blind spot, with that effect rippling out to those he's near. He does this. Do it. End of part two! Thanks for watching! Next week we'll be diving into part three, where we get a bunch of new info about a couple Radiant Orders, as well as one of the most surprising interludes in the entire Stormlight Archive. If you want to watch that video right now, it's available to my supporters on Patreon. Join Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, and Chris, and the rest of these wonderful folk, and you can watch next week's video today. If not, you'll just have to wait and find out. Lots of burps. Ghost of Eda.